uh, error vector magnitude, where and why we measure it. So we have, uh, uh, we have introduced uh, a new term here, and I think it's time to, uh, to maybe define it. And so uh, we mentioned the, the constellation map when we talked about generating uh, quam symbols. So uh, each point on the constellation map um, represents uh, an amplitude and phase that contain the information of this symbol and we uh, we try to uh, to have this amplitude and phase as accurate as possible but in reality and we will go over the some of the reasons later on in reality in reality there are impairments that um, that actually uh, degrade the accuracy of the measured constellation points um, and we measure or we find a different point on the constellation map than initially was transmitted or was uh, intended to be transmitted. Okay, so we need to define this error between the ideal constellation point and the point where uh, we find uh, the symbol uh, and actually uh, we, we do it in a vector way so we, uh, we generate an error vector that is, uh, is pointing from the ideal constellation point to the measured point and, uh, and this error vector um, is, uh, is of course needs to be minimized in systems but we want to, to first define it and then, um, and then measure it okay if it is of, of course we uh, if we think about uh, separating the different constellation points uh, we need to have low enough error so one constellation point will not be uh, misplaced uh, with another constellation point because it will give us different data. So um, we need to keep this error vector module very small. We measure it in either percentages uh, of, uh, of the, uh, the original uh, ideal sub-symbol or in dB uh, below the ideal uh, sub-symbol and uh, uh, it is normalized to the average QAM uh, power received. We understand that uh, um, the, uh, the, different, the different symbols um, may have different amplitudes or they, some of them have different amplitudes and the same error vector may reflect a different uh, uh, average uh, in, in, uh, uh, in measuring this uh, error. So we, we actually normalize uh, the error vector found in each uh, constellation point to the average power uh, received in the receiver. So where we uh, measure EVM, um, so there are some, um, uh, I, I would say, known methods uh, or very agreed definitions that usually people uh, measure EVM in the transmitter output. But in the same way, uh, we can measure it also in the receiver output and uh, and uh, we can actually measure EVM uh, for the full transmit and receive by creating a loopback. So some of this is, uh, is agreed in the whole industry, some of it uh, is uh, needed to, to extend the, the, the idea 
but it is uh, it i think it is uh, tr it is uh, a, a good question to ask what is the evm of any component in the uh, transmit receive uh, channels so if we look at the transmitter we can measure uh, evm at the output usually after having all the impairments of the power amplifier will be a, a more inclusive uh, measurement uh, but if we uh, look at receivers the uh, the best way to measure the evm of the receivers will be at baseband after uh, including the uh, the impairments of the uh, uh, mixing to, to baseband and all the AGC and filtering. We will discuss it soon to, to understand the, the different um, contributors to, uh, to EVM. And I think the, uh, the most inclusive uh, EVM measurement is to create a, a loopback, uh, a very uh, a good loopback like a coax that is connecting the uh, transmitter output and the receiver input um, or uh, through some attenuation of course uh, or a different way we can do it with antennas over the air uh, to create some uh, some loopbacks uh, but uh, include both transmit and receive to have the total uh, impairments from uh, from the the full transceiver Why we measure EVM? Uh, EVM is, is a, a quite modern uh, way of measuring uh, impairments in uh, transmitters and receivers. In the past, uh, people were more um, uh, focused on noise figure and phase noise and uh, linearity measures like uh, uh, 1 dB compression and IIP3 and all these parameters are important today but the nice thing about EVM is that it is a very compact uh, and inclusive way of measuring all the impairments uh, on the constellation map that is uh, uh, more relevant to, to uh, OFDM, to the new uh, modulation schemes that came uh, in uh, in recent 15-20 uh, years, um, and were not uh, were not uh, employed before, so that's why we see more people uh, doing communication, asking about EVM, and uh, don't care about the different components about the EVM because uh, the uh, the total uh, error is what, what's important today to, uh, um, to communication engineers rather than the specific noise figure or linearity or phase noise and we will explain this soon. Um, also uh, EVM is important because it contains both amplitude and uh, phase error uh, in QAM signals and uh, the last point is that uh, it covers the potential impairment from uh, from mixing of the in-band subcarriers themselves. So it's not only uh, uh, blockers or spores or uh, noise figure uh, that can come from uh, from uh, uh, or phase noise that can come from external sources, but also the uh, the subcarriers themselves can impair each other and we will uh, explain uh, later on an example of how they can degrade the linearity of each other. A uh, simple way to, to, uh, to understand it is just to think about peak to average uh, that is created by the different subcarriers and of course if we, uh, if we don't uh, have uh, um, linear enough uh, systems the, the different subcarriers are actually uh, impairing each other.